Hello, this is the third video. I'm going to go over units and prefixes in this video. So the first slide I have here is an article from 1999. It's a true story. A Mars probe was lost due to a simple math error. What happened was there were two different teams, two different teams of scientists. One used metric units, one used the English units. So there was a miscommunication when they sent the Mars probe and they sent it to wrong elevation and it crashed and it resulted in a loss of $125 million. So this is just to show you that units are very important. If we don't use them, then people don't know what we're talking about. If you say you traveled five, well, it was at five meters or five miles, it really makes a big difference. The next slide, I'd like to go over the three physical quantities that are very commonly used in this course. And from these quantities, we can derive everything else in this course. So these are very fundamental quantities. The first one is going to be time. They're not in any particular order, it's just the first one I thought of. And then we want to talk about the unit. So the SI unit is a system of units that has been adopted throughout the world. There are only three countries that don't use this system, the US included. So the units that have been agreed upon is seconds. So you could use, you could use minutes or hours or even years to describe time, but seconds is the SI unit. The second quantity is length. So you can think of this as a distance and it's going to be measured in meters. So again, we're not going to be using feet or miles. We're going to be using meters as the SI unit. And finally, the last one is mass. And this is going to be measured in kilograms. So you definitely want to know these three quantities and their units because we're going to be using them all the time. So if we're not dealing with one of these fundamental quantities, then the other quantities that we're dealing with will have derived units. That means that they're going to be formed from the three fundamental units. So there are many quantities that have derived units. I just want to talk about these three here just as examples. So even though we don't know the definition, I have listed the definition here. We don't have to worry too much about the definition. This is just an exercise in figuring out the units of a given quantity if you do know the definition. So if we're given that speed has a definition of length per time, all we have to do is stick in the units that we know for length and time. We know length is in meters and we know time is in seconds. So that gives meters per second for speed. Acceleration has a definition of change in speed per time. If you think of accelerating while you're driving, you're speeding up very quickly. So how fast are you changing your speed? Again, we're not worried about the definition right now, we're just trying to figure out the units here. So speed is the main quantity here, which has units of meters per second. And then we're going to divide that by seconds, that's the unit of time. And then we can simplify this a little bit. Remember that if you're dividing something, you can multiply by the reciprocal instead. So meters per second divided by seconds is the same thing as meters per second times one over seconds. And then you can see if you multiply the top across, you get meters, multiply the seconds on the bottom, you get meters squared. So meters squared will be the unit for acceleration. And finally, force has a definition of mass times acceleration. So we can use the units that we already know. Mass is kilograms. And acceleration, we just found, was meters per second squared. So this is the unit for force. But actually, we used a Newton after Sir Isaac Newton because he did so much work in classical mechanics that the unit is named after him. But it's still a good exercise to figure out what the units are just based on plugging in all the units that you know into the definition. First example here, we are given an equation, Newton's law of universal gravitation. We're not worried about what it means right now. We're just trying to figure out the units 
of g in this example. We don't know what g is, it's just a constant in here. What are the units? So the best way to figure this out is to solve for g first. So we have force on the left side, we have two masses, and we have r which stands for distance. So to get g by itself, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by r squared. So this will give me f times r squared equals g times m1 times m2. So I have gotten rid of the r squared because when I multiply the right hand side by r squared here, I got rid of that r squared. And then I'm going to divide by the two masses. And this will give me g by itself. The masses cancel. So now all I need to do is plug in the units that I know for all of these quantities here. So g, the units, are going to be equal to f, which is newtons, r is a distance, has meters, but you square it, so meters squared, and the two masses have kilograms each. So we're going to go ahead and simplify this to newtons times meters squared divided by kilograms squared. You may think this example is pointless, but I really like this example because sometimes you're going to forget what the units are for a certain quantity. So it's always a good trick to find an equation that has that quantity and plug in all the other units that you know, then isolate that variable, and then you can figure out the units. Last thing I'd like to do in this video is go over prefixes. Sometimes in front of units you'll find prefixes. So prefixes correspond to powers of 10. You can see in this table here we have a lot of prefixes and most of them we're not actually going to use in this class. The most common ones that we're going to use is kilo, centi, and milli. So you can see that they stand for a power of 10. So kilo stands for 10 to the third, which is a thousand. You can also write it as 1 e to the third, or 10 to the third, right? So centi is 10 to negative 2, and milli is 10 to negative 3. So anything here and below, as you can see with the decimal representation, is going to be a number smaller than 1. Anything above here is going to be a number greater than 1. So if you see one of these prefixes, so especially a K, a C, or an M, if you see them in front of a quantity, in front of a unit, sorry, then all you need to do is substitute the power of 10 for the prefix. So let's look at an example to see what this means. So in this example here, we have 35.7 centimeters, and we're trying to write it without prefixes. So we see this prefix in front of the unit here. All we have to do is replace it with a power of 10. The previous slide told us that centi was 10 to the negative 2. So replace centi here, do a, you can write a little multiplication sign, 10 to the negative 2 meters. That's all you have to do. Now there's different ways that you can write this. You can go ahead and get rid of the, of the power of 10 here. And if you're multiplying by 10 to negative two, a negative exponent means that you're going to move the decimal two places to the left. So that's going to be 0 0.357 meters. If you had to write this number in scientific notation, then all you'd have to do is Replace this with a number between 1 and 10. So replace it by 3.57. And then, since you've already moved a decimal place 1 to the left, you only need to move it one more to the left. So it'd be times 10 to negative 1. Negative 1 says move the decimal 1 to the left. So either of these three ways, we have now written this number without the prefix. Let's do one more here, 0.893 milliseconds. So milli stands for 10 to negative 3. So you replace that prefix with 10 to negative 3. And once again, we can 
write this in scientific notation by converting this to a number between 1 and 10. So we're going to write it as 8.93. And now, instead of having to move the decimal 3 to the left, since we moved it 1 to the right, now we have to move the decimal 4 to the left. So times 10 to negative 4. You can probably see this a little bit more easily if we go ahead and move the decimal place 3 to the left here. So it was right here. So 1, 2, 3, move it right here. So that's our number. And we can see that if we write it with an 8, then now we have to move it an additional one place to the left, which is why I have the 10 to negative 4 here. So hopefully this video gave you an idea of the importance of units and the units that we're going to use most frequently in this course, namely the second, the meter, and the kilogram. And then when you have a prefix in front of the unit, how to get rid of that prefix. This is especially useful if you need to put these numbers into a calculator. You cannot put a prefix in a calculator, but you can plug it in as a decimal in the calculator or even in scientific notation in the calculator.